proceed. So these are some of programs coming up. So we are going to have this PNS imaging. I think it will get stretched to about uh, seven to eight classes. I hope so if you want to learn everything in detail, uh, you know, uh, the uh, uh, CT scan, computerized tomography of the PNS, uh, MRI of the PNS and other modalities available and pathologies. If you want to learn everything individually, then it takes about eight to 10 classes. Okay, let's see how fast we can finish these classes. Uh, okay, so we are going to do this, conduct this uh, PNS imaging classes on Thursdays and Sundays, 1 to 2 p.m. in the afternoon, Indian. So why did I keep this name, you know, how to fly an aeroplane for our, uh, you know, your PNS imaging uh, master class? See, you all have uh, traveled by air. I'm sure of it, okay? So when you have taken off, you know, uh, and flying, suddenly captain, captain announces, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Captain Prahlad uh, uh, talking to you, speaking to you. Uh, we are cruising at now about 40,000 uh, uh, feet above the sea level and uh, our journey is comfortable. Uh, we expect to reach uh, our destination uh, say 10, 10, 10 a.m. or something like that, okay? Uh, but I've spoken to many, uh, many of these uh, pilots. They say even though they go with a plan, most of the times they face a lot of disturbances like turbulence, way offs, technical issues, okay, direction issues, communication issues with the nearby airports. So many glitches they will have. In spite of that, in spite of that, they land on time. That we have noticed most of the times, you know, rarely we get delayed. So that is what they do, pilots, they manage to land on, uh, at, a, at a designated time to the designated airport. But how do they do it? How do they do it? That is, uh, that, that is something, you know, we need to study today. Similarly, we surgeons, we go to our operation theaters every morning with a designated plan that I'm going to do, I'm going to perform the surgery perfectly well. But in spite of that, we will have a lot of problems. Like they will have problem with OT equipment, we have problem with the staff, then even patient pathology and anatomical variations, complications, bleeding, uh, so many things will be there. Uh, mainly uh, interop specifically to, to, to speak about. But in spite of that, somehow we able to manage uh, for surgery perfect way and come back. So how do we do that? Okay. So see what pilots have is uh, to cruise perfectly. They have something called their pilot checklist, their toolbox, their dashboard. Okay. And see so many indicators are there in the dashboard. And these are pilot tools. They're able to fly comfortably, safely and land at a designated airport on time because of these tools. Like similarly, we surgeons, we also have some tools that is computerized tomography for, for specifically endoscopic sinus surgery. I would call this is surgeon's checklist or I would call it as surgeon's dashboard, okay? This is dashboard for us for all endoscopic sinus surgery as well as uh, for uh, anterior skull based surgery also that uh, we should uh, remember, okay? So you may ask me, see now uh, such wonderful endoscopes are there. They give such beautiful illumination Okay, magnification, angled view, can't we manage without imaging? I agree with you. We are getting excellent uh, magnification, uh, excellent uh, illumination and angled views. But, 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 unless, unless we do invasive procedures, we won't be able to have a look, look into the sinuses. I'm sure you agree with me. Okay, we can only do a diagnostic endoscopy uh, with minimal, you know, we can get a minimal information at all only. Not, we can't peep into the sinuses. For example, I will show you one of my case, early case I had done long back. Okay. I, I had done perfect surgery uh, with my experience, but I didn't get a CT scan done for this patient because patient was poor. But patient came back with recurrent disease on one side. You can see uh, this maxis sinus. I have done a very good uh, unsnectomy, middle meatal antrostomy. And I've also done good anti ethmodectomy Same thing on the opposite upper side, but opposite side, he came back with persistent disease. Okay, then I got the CT scan done. Then I realized my mistake. Okay, I could not have a complete look into the maxillary sinus because of this uh, Haller cell. 
that is infraorbital ethmoidal cell. Because there was no scan available, I confused this Haller cell to the floor of the air orbit. Okay, that's why I did not try to excise this cell. Okay, that's why the disease persisted in his maxillary sinus. Patient kept coming back. If I had got a CT scan done beforehand, I would have had this complete information. Confidently, I would have removed the Haller cell and I would have removed excised the disease also. So this is what happens for a pilot if his indicators, if his dashboard is not working properly, if he doesn't have a uh, proper, da you know, a functioning dashboard, he will cross cross land or he will meet with an accident. Coming to the imaging modalities, we have different imaging modalities starting from, you know, a plain X-ray. Uh, then we have advanced now MRI, and in between we have this uh, CT scan, which we commonly use for paranasal sinus diseases. Okay, like like you know, there are different like there are different. Uh, uh, aeroplanes starting from small uh, single pilot uh, uh, planes and next we have our passenger airlines that is our CT scan then we have advanced uh, Concorde flights which are grounded now okay which are now which don't fly anymore similarly we have these modalities okay so so CT scan becomes a gold standard but how do we get CT scan do we order the CT scan right away we don't order the CT scan right away we need to do some groundwork like here you know if the airport if you observe through the windows in the airport so when a flight lands and before take off they will be doing lot of activity okay that is called ground preparation like that we also have to prepare a lot for our patients that is you give one or two courses of conservative treatment sufficient treatment beforehand then also give patients some simpto sympathomimetic nasal spray like oximetazoline or xylometalazoline and ask the patient to clear the nose beforehand because a large blob of muc mucus secretion in the you know in the nasal cavity can appear like a polyp and if and if there is a, you know some inflammation some edema is there uh, that will also may pronounce patients you know the pathology and the ct scan so giving some sympathomimetic nasal spray helps and why conservative treatment it can serve two purposes you know one is it will give a realistic view of the CT scan, you know, the treatment that will also help you prepare the patient for surgery. That we should uh, remember, okay? So groundwork is very, very important uh, for these patients. That's what uh, we should remember, okay? Yeah. And coming to now the pilot's basic tools, see, we'll compare our tools, what we have uh, with theirs, okay? The pilots, they have one of the most basic tools that is a basic compass which they carry in pockets all always okay the, that will help them which direction they fly okay same way we also have to should have a one compass that is we should always note right and left sides properly because we should not be operating on the wrong side like pilots they should not be flying in a wrong direction so we should not be operating in a wrong side so you mark you see when you study the cities can see which is right side and which is left side properly okay that you should mark before you analyze the CT scans okay next heading indicator okay heading indicator in a in an aeroplane that will tell them where exactly they're uh, flying okay that is a very important tool for them they have to keep that always similarly we should also have a heading indicator that is studying films in one particular direction either you can go from anterior to posterior okay or come posterior to anterior this is very important okay keep this heading indicator okay yeah and next they have something called altimeter altimeter is how high they are flying you know they cannot fly beyond certain limit beyond 40 or 50000 feet they cannot go because they will reach earth the stratosphere uh, you know beyond uh, our atmosphere where there is more negative pressure is there vacuum is there and temperature is very cold they can't go there so they should always know how they are flying so similarly, we also have an altimeter. Our altimeter is, that is anterior skull base. Okay, that, that is our altimeter. So we should look at our skull base in all sections. Okay, that is very important. You should study skull base in all sections. Okay, remember, this is our altimeter. Then they have something called attitude indicator. Okay, attitude indicator is, see, when they're flying, both their wings should be in a perfect horizontal plane when they fly in straight line. What happens? If wing tilts even little bit, even one degree, they will altogether, you know, that will change their direction altogether and they will land in some other airport as in some other place. So this attitude indicator, they should always look at it 
and they should ensure that they are flying in a perfect uh, direction okay that way we also have a, a attitude indicator that is lamina perpresia so in all sections in all cases we should look at the lamina perpresia which is nothing but medial wall of the orbit which is very thin bone and we should look for any breach in lamina perpresia uh, uh, any deficiency in lamina perpresia we should ensure so that intraoperatively we don't injure the lamina perpresia inward directly okay that is our attitude indicator then they have something called magnetic compass magnetic compass is something which you know uh, which uh, compares the plane's uh, uh, compass and the plane's direction to the earth magnetic field so that they don't lose their direction they lose their uh, you know uh, their attitude and all everything everything depends on this magnetic compass okay so that is the some basic element they have to keep all the time so for us also we may also lose the way uh, many times we are uh, when we are operating we may lose the landmark get into trouble but whenever we get into trouble there is one constant landmark we always have in the nose uh, uh, is our compasses magnetic compasses the nasal septum so if you lose direction if you lose the landmarks come back and come back to the nasal septum okay so again you should be studying the nasal septum in all sections look for any deviated nasal septum spur or uh, any other conditions for perforations and slip like that okay then there is something called flight plan waypoints see suppose if they're flying from one city to other city say in india they're flying from north india from delhi to bangalore in south india you know how do they fly do they fly in a straight line no never they always fly in a zigzag way that is from one airport to other airport you know they fly along different airports which come in the way why do they do that that is because you know if if there is some technical uh, issue in the aeroplane okay there is some problem if they have to do an emergency landing then there should be some airport some airport which should be nearby okay that is why they use these waypoints similarly we also have waypoints so what are waypoints for us that are landmarks okay surgical landmarks anatomical landmarks so we should always keep landmarks see surgery is all about going from one landmark to other landmark and work in between this landmark okay that we should remember remember the way waypoints and flight plan you know see the ct scans are so important they not only tell us pathology the extent of the disease possible complications anatomical variations when we are operating it also gives us a flight plan a pathway a roadway for us that we should remember that's why all ent surgeons should have a first hand knowledge of ct scans okay we have very good friends uh, in radiology department we can go and discuss with them see the films and a gantry okay we can get a first hand information uh, but still if you can assess these scans yourself that you know it's always better you get first hand knowledge that you should uh, remember 